Hello, my name is Faisal Khan. I am a banking and a payment consultant. I got a very interesting question in the email uh, this day before yesterday, and it said, why is it that a transfer within the bank is almost real time, is almost instant, but a transfer from bank to bank takes time? And the, the challenge here is I'm trying to answer it without being technical, so I'm gonna give you an analogy. If you're living in a house and you have siblings and parents and what have you, and if you have to give $20 to your brother, you just hand it over to him. You know, it's $20 from your wallet going into the $20 of your brother or your sister or your mother or your father, what have you. So it's an internal movement. You don't have to get dressed. You don't have to go out. You don't have to wash your face. You don't have to put your shoes on. You don't have to take the car out. Nothing. It was you just simply took the money out and handed it over. That's what an internal transfer in a bank looks like. You don't have to go anywhere, you don't have to depend on anyone, you don't have to, you don't care about the weather outside, etc. It's a transfer within the bank, within the system, within the household, and hence it is almost immediate. Now, when you have to do a bank-to-bank -bank transfer, you have to do the following. You now have to take a $20 bill, you have to get dressed, put your shoes on, check for the weather, get the car out, clean it up, gas it up, and go across town, maybe across the state line, maybe across a couple of states, maybe across the world. And you have to drive there, but there are certain conditions. You, can, you can't drive on the weekend, so uh, you can't drive during off hours. And when you get there, uh, let's say it's 11 p.m. over there. Well, turns out the other party who has to receive the money is sleeping. And you can't give hand them the $20 bill until they wake up. So this is why when you have to do a transfer from one household to the other household, you are now dependent on various factors in between, you know, the, the, what the weather conditions would be like, what public holidays would be there, would there be any traffic jams, would there be any queues, is, is the weekend, you know, not going to work for you and so forth. So this is now where you have exited the, or the comfort of your own household and now you're dependent on so many factors and then you have to deliver the money to the other person. It gets even more complicated when the currency of choice is not the same. So if you have dollars and you have to give euros, now you have to insert a third party, which is the insertion of a bureau de change or an FX provider that is gonna take the dollars and give euros or take the dollars or give Bangladeshi takas or Pakistani rupees or Nigerian nairas and so forth. In this case, you now have to take the delays or the issues or the factors of the exchange bureau, the FX provider into consideration before the transaction is done. So this is why it takes longer to transfer money from one bank to the other. What we are trying to do and what many, many nations are trying to do, they're trying to build a better highway system. They're trying to build a better system that operates all the time. They're trying to make sure that virtually all the houses are together. So when all the households come together, the commute, so to speak, the delay, so to speak, is very less. And this is why bank-to-bank -bank transfers can then happen in a more reasonable time frame. Still won't be real time, we'll get there eventually, but in a, real, in, in, in a near real time uh, manner. And this is especially true for where you have disparate countries, disparate banks, disparate banking channels and so forth, which are completely different and you're trying to make them homogeneous and so forth and make them function in a, a simple way. There is one other thing, which is, you know, banks being greedy. So think about taking money from point A, from Chicago to some other place. Uh, now, what if I tell you that the more you slowly you drive, that, that dollar, the $20 bill will give you one penny, two penny, three penny, four cents, five cents. So it's in your benefit to drive slowly because you get a couple of cents. And if you have to move billions and billions of dollars a day, those cents add up. So banks earn interest on this money. It's free money. It's, it doesn't cost them. It's some money that they have to give to someone else. They might as well lend it out for two days and earn some interest and then eventually pay the other person. So that is called the float, the float income on the money, which is free money and they give it out for borrowing, they make money on it, you don't get to do it, uh, and it's there, and it's your money that they're making money on. So this is another reason why bank-to-bank -bank transfers do take time. But typically, the internal household transfers or the internal transfers within the bank are near and instant because you don't have to take any external factors into consideration, and when you do movements between two different households or two different banks, then there is a distance in between. There is a physical and a logical uh, distance in between that you have to take care of, which has problems, interfaces, 
uh, translations, etc., and so forth that you have to keep in mind when uh, such transfers happen. So I hope that analogy is able to explain why internal transfers are much faster than external transfers. And as always, if you have a question or a comment, there's a form in the description below, fill it out, and I'll be happy to answer a question next time. Till then, have a good one.